from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise. It's The Cube, covering Console Connect Live 2015. Sponsored by Console, here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco for Console Connect 2015. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. I'm my co-host Jeff Frick, general manager of the Cube business. We go to all the events, 70 plus events, more and more every year. And we're here live in San Francisco to unpack this new software defined interconnect, this new revolution, evolution, revolution around uh, IIX and Console Inc. And our next guest is Samuel Curtis, partner at Rack 59. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, congratulations on your anniversary here yeah. in San Francisco, hanging out, feeling <laughs> good. You. The beautiful Weather's city. perfect. Weather's nice. Very nice. Very much like Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have their jackets on. It's like 100 degrees here in San Francisco. As, as today, uh, Pat Gelsinger yeah. said, you know, DevOps and networks coming. It's like, can the farmers and the cowboys live together? Kind of like <laughs> to bring that Oklahoma vibe here. That's what's going on. It's a whole new convergence of talent opportunities, you know, joking aside, cowboys and, and, and farmers are really kind of living together. You got dev, dev and ops, programmable infrastructure, application market. Now the pro we need reliability, end-to-end -end connected. That's what they're proposing here. What's your take on all this as someone in the ecosystem? What do you make sense of, how do you make sense of console direct connect? You know, I'm a, by training a network engineer, so I understand the nuances and the details behind that that connect button on the console, and uh, I'm super impressed. I think it simplifies a very complex and compli you know very uh, difficult uh, networking infrastructure to build, and it makes it a lot easier and a nice uh, social type LinkedIn type approach, which makes it a lot more easier to use and. When you make things easier like that, it just breeds more and more connections and, and, and it takes down a lot of barriers that exist today. Yeah, so, so what's your point of view? You're from Oklahoma and, and I, you know, sometimes we're jaded. We're, we're here in the, in the valley and things are, you know, cranking along a little bit probably ahead of the curve. But, you know, from, from your perspective, you know, where are we in this journey? What's kind of cloud adoption look like in, in, in your world and your customer set? And, and where is the direct connect um, story? Where are we? Kind of on that path. Well, I think um, you're, 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 I think with the console concept and and uh, uh, Bill Norton's uh, white paper on the business uh, case for Direct Connect makes a lot of sense. I mean, you 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 look you focus on secure private connections, and you try to build a business case not just financially but also operationally that makes sense. So I feel that uh, uh, this is. Early in, the clouds just kind of really become more and more defined. It was more kind of esoteric in the past, and I think uh, this further underpins what the cloud is and makes it accessible. Yeah, so we jumped right into We should give you a minute to kind of give the audience a, a little a color on what, what Rack 59 is, who are you guys, what are you all about, who's your customer set, where are you located, kind of the, the basic 411. Sure, yeah, we are, uh, 1.6 million square foot data center in Oklahoma City. Previously, the former uh, Lucent 5E manufacturing facility. Um, we have built the first NAP and IXP in Oklahoma, and we had the very first peering conference in Oklahoma, hosted that. So we're a huge proponents of connection. Uh, connection is typically one of the highest uh, cost on the income statement next to you know power and utilities. So um, we're trying to reduce our customers OpEx by building an, an ecosystem that incorporates console. So. And you're getting a lot of call for connecting to, to the big public clouds as well through your customer base with, with Amazon and Microsoft, et cetera. We've had to aggregate a lot of different ISPs together to, to build a, uh, to get, say for instance, Netflix attention. But I do know the content uh, providers are wanting to get closer and closer to the eyeball and they want uh, to, you know, make it as as a good experience as they can for that, uh, that consumer. So we're trying to just create the ecosystem or connectivity that will appeal to a content delivery network, and so that uh, console actually kind of helps us bring uh, get closer to those con content de de content networks. Um, otherwise, we're kind of smaller. We're not as 
dense from a traffic perspective in the rest of the rest of the United States, but we're getting there. Right. Uh, but if we pull together and, and people peer more and more on a local basis, we'll drive more and more interest and and derive more and more value from consoles. So. This is an interesting concept, though. 1.6 million square feet. You think that would get people's attention? I guess they're looking at your traffic, but you know. So how does something like Console Connect change the game, where you no longer have to? You know, kind of, hey, look at us, look at us, we, we need your attention, where now you've got really kind of a direct access point to go in and start to build those relationships, both on the business side as well as the technology side with this uh, direct connecting. That's a good question. I think, you know, the size of the building is one thing, but the power, the availability of power, redundant power is another. So we have a 25 megawatt power substation on site that's dual fed. Console is a lot like that power substation uh, to power as it is to internet. So by saying we have console IX uh, presence in our data center, it gives us that that push that we need as from a from a wider network standpoint, you know, direct connect. So So I gotta ask about the DevOps, because I want to bring that back here, because if you can simplify direct provisioning, and Jay Adelson was talking about how software guys now are coming together with the networking guys, it really creates a good environment for APIs and API based software. Yeah. Do you guys see that as a networking engineer? Do you guys think like that? Is that something that goes on? I mean, do you guys say, hey, we don't want to be in the mitigating a, you know, DDoS attacks, which is something you guys probably do now, but as you move into more of the proactive design, do you, do you think about the app guys in mind when you develop this out? Absolutely. You know, I think, um, you know, typically network guys, traditional network guys, don't, they're layer one, two, three, they don't go much higher than that. So. Um, there's not been that uh, connection between the app guys and the network guys in my experience. But I will say we're seeing in the enterprise market, you typically have had your network staff in larger enterprises and an and a IT staff. And they typically didn't coalesce sometimes. Uh, the network guys are all about resiliency, and the network guys, IT guys, are about uh, uh, robustness and, and, and applications. So, by with software-defined networking, with the with the, the new growth or intellectual growth of networks into software, I can see a definite marriage, and I can def and sometimes the app guys don't understand why it takes the hardware guys so long or network guys to run an Ethernet cable. It makes sense to just bring those two groups together is a, maybe a poor analogy, but that's right. what I look at it, you know. And, and is latency now in the, in the world of, you know, kind of consumer-defined expectations on application performance, is, is that kind of the unifying attribute that brings those two sides together? Because, you know, it's all about latency to the app these days, and latency is impacted by so many things along the line that I would think that that maybe, is that the kind of the, the, the universal tie that now brings them all together? Latency, um, DDoS mitigation is a big one. You know, you, you on the public network, you have about four, on average, four networks that you traverse to get to your content or vice versa. You eliminate, you know, three of those networks along the way with Direct Connect. Uh, it improves latency and it also reduces your uh, your exposure. You know, and what's the number one conversation you hear with customers? Is it scale? Is it security? I mean, this is a new market opportunity for. I would say uh, initially it's security, um, but it turns into bandwidth. <laughs> Once you know it's bandwidth, they can never seem to get enough bandwidth. Yeah. So uh, it seems like the more bandwidth you provide, the more. No one's consume. ever complained <laughs> from getting it's more like bandwidth. It's like the CPU and the OS story, right, from back <laughs> in the day. Yeah. Yeah. You get a better new computer, and then the OS takes up more bandwidth. You get a better computer, yeah. the OS That's takes right. more bandwidth. I mean, Wi-Fi, it's so funny. I remember when Wi-Fi hit the scene with the Centrino chipset back in the day. Now you go anywhere with kids, where's the Wi-Fi? Because they're on the cell plans. You go international. Connectivity really is the big deal. No one, I'm joking, but no one complains when they get more bandwidth. I mean, just good things are happening. But they definitely complain when there is no connection. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah or slow because they're being rerouted through China. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> but that's a problem. Talk about that one issue about the rerouting of, because th that's in the internet, there are some path decisions. I mean, routing protocols based on the you know, lowest cost path, right. you know, performance, there's all these algorithms, if you will. I'm oversimplifying it, but explain that problem with the internet. That's a big deal. Well, you have no control over that path. It's going to take the open shortest path first, usually, uh, through BGP or whatever routing pro protocol. But I know if you can't control it, then you're susceptible. So a lot of problems that we have, like I go back to his DDoS, and uh, earlier a keynote speaker, Albergio, I think, said that 
uh, sometimes the uh, network that had no, this is not the target is inadvertently affected. So it also has an impact on the on the innocent network that's one of those four networks connecting your connection. So um, DDoS has really been a big driver, and I think if you can control the the route in which your data packets go. Um, then you mitigate that. So you have no control over a dynamic protocol that, you know, over the wide area now, big eye internet, so. For the folks watching right now, and who are going to watch this on demand, what is the Console Connect show all about here? What's the vibe? Why is this such an important show? I mean, it's not like the Apple event, it's not Fox News is an outside, hey, breaking news, a direct connection. I mean, it's a nuanced business, but the impact is significant. Share your view on this event, why it's important, and some of the vibe in the hallways. Yeah, I think this is the undergirding of the network. This is the, um, without this element of, the, of, of technology, that Apple event, the other, the very uh, uh, obvious events that are real popular, they wouldn't have that event. They wouldn't have the application without the network to run on. Uh, console, it actually with IIX's, uh, solution. I see that they actually can solve problems for the cellular carriers that, to deliver that application, for the uh, ISPs to deliver that application. So it's a really important, it's the infrastructure aspect of that consumer experience. So it's like without roads, Ferraris can't drive their car. Exactly. Right? And exactly. The Audubon creates engineered road, cars go faster. Exactly. If there's potholes in the road and a lot of turns, yeah, to your, I mean, this is a big deal. It's the underlying people take it for granted. Yeah, or airplanes. It's, a, it's first class versus business, yeah. essentially. If you're a data packet, so. yeah. private jet, fleet private of jet. jets, a fleet of jets, a corporation can have their own autonomous system. Yes, exactly. And the dynamically, you know, build an autonomous system for an enterprise customer is uh, phenomenal. It's really good. Sam, let's uh, take a final question here for you. What's Gonna, what's the world going to look like five years out? Mm -hmm. As Direct Connect becomes popular, are we back to the more robust, stable? What's the future look like in your mind? I think it's uh, an avenue or a medium by which to continue the exponential growth that we've seen on the internet of things thus far. So I think console is a necessary um, product or service that has to be there in order to keep that growth going. Uh, we can't continue to feed that growth with legacy uh, solutions. So this is the next uh, uh, technology from an infrastructure standpoint to simplify and increase the uh, awareness and the ability to interconnect. So. Samuel Kerr's partner at uh, Rack 59. Thanks for joining us. Thanks Come for having from Oklahoma. me. Enjoy your visit. Appreciate it. Thank Enjoy you. your rest of the business in San Francisco. We're live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back more in uh, Console Connect Live after the short break.